Hello and welcome to the program. I am Dej Badimasi. Lagos Voices is a collaborative effort involving some journalists and civil society organizations based in Lagos. The group is known as Partnership for Voice and Accountability. Funding was provided by SAVE, the State Accountability and Voice Initiative. Now we continue our special focus on the three molested and sodomized women of Ejigo, which resulted in the death of one of them. We can confirm to you that the suspects in this case have been arrested by the police. In other words, the men who were responsible for the torture of the women and subsequent death of one of them have been arrested. As you know, the Inspector General of Police has waded into the matter and ordered a thorough investigation. And so we expect that pretty soon, the suspects would be arraigned in court. Now, we caught up with one of the assaulted ladies, the younger one in the video. Here is how she narrated their horrific ordeal in the hands of those heartless men who tortured them. In the morning, they just come to our house. They just come and meet me. The time that I say is so them, I am afraid that, ah, who is this person? And I went there. Then I asked for my mom. My mom said, I'm not around. Those they don't come in, they don't me. They don't take me, they don't start beating me. They, they beat my mommy, they don't take us to the market. That the place that they used to be so much. When we reach them, the reason that when my sister has played, that the place that she's working, I take them to jail. Then they take my sister, then they beat my sister. They take my sister. When I reach them, then they reach them, they don't start beating my sister. They take pepper. They go and drown pepper. They now put saline. They put. They rub it in my body. They beat my sister. They rub it in my sister's body with eyes. They put it in a bomb bomb. The thing that they do for my sister, they do it for me too. So they don't say that she go and came to call my mommy. They now go and call my mommy. Then my mommy wants to go and take my two brother in the school. They don't take my mommy. They take my daddy. The time that we reach there, they now say that ah. If my mommy have come that they should go and take court last. That if my mommy have come that they should cut my mommy's neck. And I start begging them. Then I say, when I talk to my dad, they are going to kill me. Then I not talk anything. They beat my sister, then they beat me, they beat my mommy. Then that they beat my the people that is there, they don't shout shout that they should beat my sister very well. That they should beat my sister very well. Then the time that I beg them, I beg them, they do not hear. They see that. When I talk to my dad, they are going to kill me. And I did not talk anything again. The time that they not take my sister, they just start beating my sister. They start beating my sister. Then my mommy come. My mommy come. My mommy wants to talk. They did not let my mommy to talk. They did not let my mommy to talk. And I did not talk anything. They all smash my sister with Baboja. And I start beating my sister. Beat my mommy. Beat me. Start beating my sister. One day that I went to market, I saw that they are beating one man like this. Then I, so they just take the man to the place. They call the person, they call the man's neck to death. The time that I say that ah, I should go in to death, that I should die, they, they pursue everybody back. The time that they beat me, but like, the pepper that they rub my body, start peppering me. Then my stomach is turning me. I told my mom, my mommy told me that. There's not any money that she's going to use to buy my reason for me, that there's not any money that I And I told her that to, that to not worry. That I'm going to I'm going to find that to you not know, work. The, the time my mom, the time that we wish I told, they all say that ah, we should they go and tell our landlord. They pursue us out that we should go, we should find where to go and live. The time that we that they will that they pursue us out. My, I, me and my mom go to our village. So now. Well, quite a moving tale there. There's no question at all that. Um that market and the market authority needs to be investigated further because some of the calls we've gotten uh, in the course of doing this program is that a lot of things happen in that market especially where they torture women so we just hope something is done and that the appropriate authority go in there to investigate what exactly is going on in that market as far as security goes now the lagos state house of assembly has concluded its own investigation into the matter and handed over the case 
to uh, the State Office of the Public Defender. In winding down its investigation, the State House of Assembly also redeemed its pledge of a reward of 1,250,000 naira. Take a look at this report. The Legal State House of Assembly has fulfilled its promise of a monetary reward of 1,250,000 naira for information on the perpetrators of the molestation and sodomization of three women at Ejibo in Lagos. The women were accused of allegedly stealing Pepe at the central market there, and one of them eventually died from the torture. The House Committee set up to investigate the case held a public hearing barely two weeks ago, where it announced the monetary reward. Following the progress recorded in the case and the arrest made so far by the police, the House decided to make good its promise. The first informant, the person who first told us, you know, uh, about it, that, oh, this and this and this. So that will be, because of the, the prime uh, uh, position that uh, 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 that informant, you know, took in the scheme of things, will be given 500,000. Um, the victim, the mother, and, I, uh, and now the father as well, because we understand the, the, the suffering he also went through, not for the suffering now, but the fact that he even had to pay, I mean, to, you know, before the daughter died and the rest of those things. So between him, his wife and the, the daughter that's alive, well, we won't say, we, we will not want to break the family to two, but 500,000 will go to them. So what we had in mind was give the the old man uh, 250, give the the mother and daughter 250. So to the family, uh, 500,000. And to the elder who also finally uh, uh, brought the perpetrator for us to hand the perpetrators over to the police, we will also give uh, our thank you, sir, 250,000 naira. The Speaker of the House commended the efforts of the Women and Rights for Change Initiative, who have been in the forefront of the fight for justice for the women and all other parties who made vital contributions. I didn't believe it could happen in. Lagos, our own Lagos. I didn't believe it. But when people like uh, Dr. Duma came, came up strongly on this, I felt, well, we'll give it a shot. But I doubt it. I really doubted the veracity of that story. I did not believe it could happen. But um, I think I've been proved wrong. I want to seize the opportunity to thank uh, uh, Dr. Odumaki and our team. And again, I thank all members of the House, especially members of uh, uh, the team that the House set up to look into the case. I thank you for a job well done. President, Women and Rights for Change Initiative, Joe Odumakin, extolled the swift response of the lawmakers. She expressed satisfaction on the arrest made so far and said her group was, however, not relenting until ultimate justice runs its full course for the victims. We were really happy when we embarked on the march and we had no other destination than the Hallow Chambers of the Lagos State House of Assembly were received and with lightning speed that committee was set up. After it was set up, they started working. 
in the process of working, we then realized that this crime was committed almost a year ago, and it did happen. The journey to prosecuting the perpetrators of the act seems to be taking a progressive dimension. The hope is that the culprits of this horrific act will soon have their day in court. Now, shortly after that event, we accosted the chairman of the investigation panel to speak about uh, their findings. Here's what he said. Well, I feel very satisfied and um, I feel fulfilled because, um, like the speaker said, when this matter first came to the House of Assembly, we were not really even sure where it took place. We were thinking maybe it took place in a Jigbo in Ocean State. Some said it was a Jigbo in Lagos State. There were so many questions that we needed to answer. Uh, and um, we quickly proceeded to have the public hearing. And at the public hearing, we even had even more questions to answer, even after the public hearing. So, um, like you must have um, seen, we uh, decided we were going to give uh, whoever gives us information, we are going to give um, some amount to aid our job. We visited the market in Ejigbo. We watched the film thoroughly, visited the market, compared the market background with what we saw in the video. We also had a series of interviews with people living around the market leaders, uh, religious leaders, um, council officials, so many people. And then um, uh, we were very glad that within 24 hours, after that public hearing, we started getting information. We got information from um, somebody that said she knew the victims. And um, she didn't even stop at that alone. She ensured that we met with the victims. We had a meeting with the victims. We spoke with them. They told us who and who uh, had a hand in their torture. And um, we proceeded further to look for those people. And um, we discovered that a lot of them had run out of town. So we had to employ some elders again in the community to help us identify the abode and all that. And uh, we thank God that we have gotten to this conclusion. And um, it, it makes me proud that Nigeria can be better again. And uh, if only people have confidence in our institution that people will come forward to give information. And the House of Assembly of Lagos State has demonstrated that we can actually have um, confidence in our various institutions. Now, we also spoke uh, with the head of the Lagos State Office of the Public Defender. We began by asking her what next in the case. Listen to what she said. What we intend to do is now that we have the victims with us is that first of all we have to put them in protective custody of the state they have to go into protective custody both the victims and the witnesses and then also the um, suspects have been um, handed over to the police now so it is now opd we are now representing the victims of this case as their lawyers now because we've been briefed we will have to go to the police station and um, ensure that the police does um the investigation. We are going to assist the police to ensure that um, all whatever um, cooperation that they need from the victims and the witnesses we are going to give to them and whatever evidence that we have so that it can assist the police in their investigation. And afterwards, we believe that yes, when the police have finished with their investigation, the case file will be forwarded to the Directorate of Public Prosecution, Lagos State, for them to give a proper legal opinion on it. Depending on, depending on whatever the um, legal opinion is now, will now inform the charge that will be um, taken to court against um, the suspects in this case. And then from there, we will ensure that um, the DPP's office takes over the case and diligently prosecutes the case while we will be watching brief for the victims and ensuring that everything is running smoothly.
the suspect have been arrested and it's now up to the police now to now do their own investigation to ensure that it is actually the real culprits that, have, that were actually arrested. Well, we'll continue to follow up on the next stage of this case. Whenever the suspects are arraigned in court, you can be rest assured we shall bring uh, that to you. Justice must be done in this case. We'll take a short break now and when we come back, it's smile once again for residents of Usman Mogaji Road in Ajangbadi or your local government area of Lagos State. Stay tuned to find out why the people are smiling. Once it rains, we don't go out. That is the reason why the student died three months ago when the rain fell. One of my brother died for this road, one of container. This color of color where you see, because they fall for a head. Rest upside Lokuto. The fact here speaks for itself. I cannot bring my car to this place, even my business has been crippled out. They have been spending a lot of money on this road, but now it's above our power. And we'll be making efforts right up, calling, meeting the media houses, and one way or the other, we'll be having negative response. We hit the road when we need to be done. This is only God can be started can give a definite time. This road has been like this for almost 21 years. The chairman is apparently wrong in terms of his permission. I went to the council, they go down to meet him three times. He doesn't even attend to us. How soon will this road be done? What's the mean? This road? We have to look at it that way. I can't give you a word. Welcome back. Now, some months ago, we reported on the condition of some roads in our Joe local government area of Lagos State. One of the roads we concentrated on was Usman Mogaji in Ajangbadi community, right in the heart of the local government area. Take a look at uh, the report, this report now, and what the people had to say back then. Ajangbadi, a community of about 3 million residents around the Jakonde area in the same local government. Here, the story is different. Residents say most of the roads in the community are bad, like this one. You would think with this drainage that stretches along the streets here, the residents would be happy. But far from it. We were surprised. Sometimes last year, maybe precisely earlier part of last year, they came in without, I don't really know what transfer between the CDAs and the local government chairman. What we see is that people were just constructing this. And in every area we go, for every drainage to be constructed, people do dig. But here, it, was, it wasn't like that. They put everything on surface. And this is the decision we are, we are finding ourselves for the past a year and a half now. So anytime there's a rainfall, we, no, nobody can come in. No matter the type of vehicle we are using, nobody can just come in. We are only begging them. If they know that they are not ready to tie this road, let them come and break this thing. So that if they, break, if they remove this their drainage, this water will flow. And people that have vehicles will go in. Since they are not ready to, because they promise that they are coming, this is the second year, and I'm telling you, I know they are coming nowhere. That is their nature in the local government. The local government is the local government. We have no, no incentive from onset. On their own, the residents say they've been trying to fix the roads, but lament that their efforts are not going far. Early last year, they came and did this within three months. But ever since they've created it, it has been a problem to us. At the slightest train, nobody can go out. No car comes in, no car goes out. Every economic value has got to stand still. And this has made us consensually to keep on asking them, promising them it's their budget, they will do it. They, even up to this year, just this month, we have gone to them three times with a letter reminding them that they should not allow the effort of our heroes past to go in vain. It's always promises and promises. We are tired. Look at the canal. It was taken. We have to contribute to 2,000 per house now to cover it again. So also we contribute money regularly to maintain it to the point where we are because it was so bad. Even when it rained seriously, we went to local government, they saw it. The local government chairman had come here, it's always a promises with promises. I even told them in the local government, if you have been setting aside some money since all the days, bit by bit, you have done this road. Please do this road. Our appeal to them strongly is they should come forward quickly to rescue us. Economic values are going to stand still. Social life has gone to stand still. Nobody can move. You could see people trooping out day in, day out from far and wide. And this road is the only linking road between, uh, let's say, Ajangbadi into Jakande. 
Every road in Jakande are bad. All the roads. Now, don't, don't forget, that was the situation of that road in Ajangbade. That's Usman Mogaji Road back in 2013. That's last year. So all the sound bites you heard there, the picture you saw, dated way back to 2000. I mean, 2000, not way back now, 2013, actually two months ago. Um, but the situation is different now. But let's just tell you that apart from filing that report, we also spoke to the chairman of uh, the local council about the road and here is what he told us back then and don't forget this was in 2013 listen to what the chairman said then by the first quarter of next year we're going to finish the road we're having three roads ongoing uh, so the three projects we're not going to have any abandoned project in my administration we are going to finish it all our ongoing pro projects. We, we have done a lot of culverts and drainages. One of those drainage is the one at Usman Mogaji that is of state standard and it is covered. And that is the first phase of that road. In 2014, we are going to get to the second stage of that road where we are going to asphalt the road. The road has consumed a lot of our resources. Because we are the first government that will seriously intervene in Jakonde area. And that's why uh, we, are, we are very desirous of spending anything we, we can lay our hands, our hands on so that that road will be an accomplished. And in between the road, we have a mini bridge that costs almost eight million to construct. Well, that's the chairman back in 2013. We can now tell you that the chairman has kept his words and serious work has begun on the road. Uh, we're going to show you the picture right away. Our attention was called to the new development by some of the residents there and we decided to go see things for ourselves. The road is now gradually taking shape as work has begun in earnest. Reinforcement work is now going on. We understand this is called uh, stone-based reinforcement and the essence is to ensure the road doesn't fail after it's uh, eventually asphalted. Surely it does not look like the road we first covered just about two months ago. Well, we're still going to bring you uh, pictures of that uh, road now. The residents are happy about the new development and urging the local government to speed up work can complete the project. Listen to what some of them have been saying. The project is very, okay. very appreciative. And the, our aim is that it, this will be an iceberg of the, what we have been expecting in terms of infrastructural amenities in this community. Because we've suffered a lot in this community concerning motorable road, pipe-bomb water, electrification, and so on and so forth. But we're happy that this one is going on. And we just think that this will not be a campaign project. That the, what I mean that that abandoned abandon project. So if they can finish it to the maximum level, that our, our satisfaction we will, we will very very appreciate it. I'm really happy because it's been a very long time we've been awaiting such a period in which our roads will be developed. Because if you can see around our neighborhood, Ajangba, the other districts, the roads are partially okay apart from this Jack Odney road, and with this being done, I really thank the local government involved and please, I want it to be so fast because you are so eager for it to be done. In fact, for long, this road, we have a suffering. We find out from sometimes water everywhere. But when I saw the construction, I was very happy. I praise God for that. Before, now they say they don't do this road. Now, we see the Working is going on now, but we beg them, we beg them, make them tie it, make them finish it, because of the idols is too much. Business is not this area. Every all this job, they don't go because of there is no market, no anything, and we pay our tax, we pay our shop and permits at local governments. But now, if they have finished the road, maybe there is everybody will come back. Well, happy residents there. Now, we took up some of their concerns with the man in charge of works in the local government area, and this is what he told us. The, uh, the people of that community have been praising the government that 
they have done well, that they listen to their uh, complaint, and the chairman has uh, 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 reversed back the, the I, I mean, give them the support to make sure that the construction is going on well. As at now, when, uh, the, construct, the contractor is, is right now working at the site of the project. So uh, from now till, I mean, any time from now, they, uh, they have put in asphalt in of about 500 loads of tippers. Now they are putting on the uh, stone base to roll the, the, the stone base so that it can be easy going for the motors at that area. Right now, since the beginning of the, uh, the road from two, two weeks time, now we are going to end up the rolling of the ass, I mean the, the cross stone. And we, we are going to leave that cross stone for at least two months, two to three months, so that the, the, the road will become solid before we can put on asphalt. asphalt. Well, let me say in three months' time, everything will be completed. So in three months' time? Yes, we'll yes. Offer... Both the asphalt and everything will be completed. The yeah. residents can smile. The residents can smile. Even right from now, they have been smiling. So I think they don't, they, there is no problem. After rolling the cross stone, there is no amount of rain that can fall that will damage that road. So that place now is okay for them. So they are waiting asphalt. So there's no problem. We don't want the contract to do any shoddy job there. That is why we want him to put in the cross stone and leave it for some time so that the, it can settle down before putting on the asphalt. Well, I hope the residents would be happy with that explanation, but we will continue to follow up on the story. We commend the local government chairman for keeping to his words and urge him to see to the completion of uh, the job. Well done, Mr. Chairman. We also hope other chairmen would emulate this example and bring development to their people. And that's where we draw the cutting on the program this week. We want to thank you very much for watching.